It's no surprise that COVID-19 is forcing a lot of people to figure out new things to do trapped indoors, and a lot of those are home improvement projects. I am no exception, but my needs are a little different than other people. I have a very large computer collection, and so a lot of my home improvement projects revolve around trying to organize it better, keep it off the ground, keep it away from moisture, and things like that. Now, behind me there in that door is a crawl space, and currently it has a lot of vintage computers and other miscellaneous things shoved into it, but it has no lighting, and it's very difficult to move around in. And I bet I could store a lot more stuff there if I had more light. So what we're going to do today is take a look in that crawl space and then try to install some light and figure out if it can be made more usable. Now, as you'll see here, uh, you open up a door to get into the crawl space, and it's up about three feet, so I have to use a small stepladder to get in here, but just because it's difficult to access doesn't mean I shouldn't try to make better use of this space. Now, when I said crawl space, I meant it. As you can see, there's really not a lot of room in here. It's only about maybe four feet floor to ceiling, but the nice thing about it is that it runs half the length of my house, and it's cool, and it's less humid, and it's dark, and those are perfect conditions for storing old computer equipment. Now let's see what we can do about the light situation. As you may be able to see, a single shop light is really not enough to illuminate this space, and it's really cluttered right now, but I feel like I could rearrange the whole thing if I could just see better. So let's take a look at the kind of lighting that I'm going to install and what my circumstances are. Currently, all I really have down here is a single extension cord in the crawl space, plus all of these two by fours that are supporting the floor above me. And uh, we're gonna install essentially something that's been very common in the last uh, five to eight years, tube LED lighting. I got all six of these lights and all of the cords and hardware necessary to mount them for about $75, and I'll put a link in the description. Now it is possible to get your own strips of LEDs very cheaply. You can get something like 100 or even 200 LEDs for something like $50. The problem with that is that you have to wire up your own 12 volt power source and I'm not really willing to do that. I just want something that'll plug into the wall or an extension cord and just work. And this kind of LED tube lighting already prepackaged in uh, fluorescent like fixtures that are very easy to hang uh, and easy to daisy chain really fits my bill. So I'm hoping this will do it. Little Amy and I here had taken for granted what the power situation was like in the crawl space, so I decided to take a closer look, and what I found was disturbing. Well, I've already run into my first snag, because in order to plan where I want to put the lights, I decided to see where this old shop light was hanging. This is something that I may have installed 20 odd years ago or so. We've been in this house 20 years. So I follow the cord all the way to that. That doesn't look very safe. For one thing, it's using a three-prong to two-prong adapter, and it's just simply hanging. And if I follow the core, the source of that, the cord, it goes all the way to the opening to the crawl space. So I'm running electricity from the beginning all the way to the end, and then all the way back again. Now that doesn't seem very efficient, so uh, first step is going to be uh, relocating the electricity for this place and hopefully replacing it with something that's true three prong. Now when I looked inside my drop ceiling I found what looked to be an extension cord where that ended which ended here. So I have no idea what an outlet is doing in my ceiling but it ran with a two prong outlet to this three prong box. Just to make sure I wasn't going crazy, I traced it all the way to this two-prong plug. I have no idea how a two-prong plug goes to a three-prong box. I also don't know why the previous owner didn't try to ground it or something, but no matter what, this has to get changed. Now, while my solution might make some electricians cringe, I figured I have a perfectly good grounded outlet box in my drop ceiling. Might as well use it. So I found two outdoor rated 15 amp cords, which are well above the actual power draw of the lights. I also ran a second cord to other equipment that I have in the crawl space, also well below the draw of the cord that it's rated for, so this should be perfectly safe. If I'm missing something obvious, please feel free to scream at me in the comments. The cables are routed fairly cleanly, and they all come through the top of the door jam, also with the 
cable and uh, other Ethernet connections that I have in the house. Now before starting any major project that involves drilling, it's probably a good idea to measure everything so that you don't make an irreversible mistake when you're doing your project. In this particular case, let's sketch out uh, my crawl space. It is uh, approximately 11 feet uh, by 14 feet. And very conveniently for me, uh, there are about 10 beams uh, that run the entire length of the crawl space above my head. And they are all very conveniently placed 12 inches apart. So let's just very quickly draw these. So these are the beams. And this is the entrance to the crawl space. Normally you'd think I would have uh, 10 beams in which to place these lights. However, there is ductwork that, that runs across the ceiling, approximately here, knocking these two out. So if I wanted to put three lights on this side, let's go ahead and divide the crawl space up into two rough halves here. So if I wanted to do it evenly here, if I want to do three here and three here, I can't use the place with the ductwork because it's completely covering this. So, let's do three, let's see here. There, the lights are about four feet long. This seems about right. Space them apart evenly. The connecting cords are three feet long. So this will work. Now, the thing is, it's important for me to lay out all the lights. Uh, actually, let's do this because I'll show you in a second. The cords are three feet long. So they can only bridge by three feet, which means I can't move these back any further. Uh, also, placement is important because these have to connect with a daisy chain cord so that I can then connect here and connect here. So that means the cords are gonna go like this and then the final cord is the cord that has the little light switch on it. And so that means my, uh, my power needs to be right there. So with that laid out, let's get to work. Public service announcement, please always drill pilot holes before screwing in wood. I have way too many split beams as a result of ignoring this practice. So a quick test to make sure that the light works at all. It is currently mounted and we have the power coming over here to this side as I outlined in the diagram. And now we're going to uh, flip it on and see what it looks like. Oh wow, and that's just one light. Holy smokes. Oh, I can't wait to get the other lights in. Let's do that now. Before I hang the rest of the lights, now would be a good time to mention why I hung this dropping straight down. You already saw my head bumping into the top of the ceiling, so why would I lower the height of the ceiling by yet another inch? Well, that's because this light radiates out in 180 degrees from its base. If I mounted it up here, it would have been out of the way, but a lot of the light would have been cut off. It would have been shooting up to the top of the ceiling, which nobody needs, and blocked by this beam itself. So by mounting on the bottom, even though I run the risk of bumping my head into them, they radiate the most light. With everything up, I can see everything, and I'm very happy with this result. I feel like I can finally get to work on organizing this space. 
Now you may see that the second half of the lights are actually installed offset. That was a snap decision I made when I was in there. I realized that without the ductwork in the way, I could light the space more evenly, so that's why they're offset. But I'm still glad I planned. As soon as I tack up the cords, I'll be ready to reorganize this space. And now that I have enough light in here to see, I can see it's going to be a pretty big job.